Welcome to the show. That was exciting, wasn't it? That's your new intro, huh? It's not really new. I mean, it's been said for ages and ages all over the broadcast media. Uh, how about we do some? Hey, welcome to You Name It, guys. Or do you want the full on? Welcome to You Name It. Hi, guys. <laughs> I'm a de- putting me on my DJ yeah. voice. Welcome to You Name It, uh, the only show you'll hear this week that talks about absolutely nothing. Well, here we are on the You Name It show. It's going pretty well. Our numbers are up. That's good. What are they up to? <laughs> up to uh, a consistent, um, let's see, how do we do it with that? All right, four million. It's four million. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> because we were, I don't know if you know this or not. I don't know if I've told you. We were voted best new podcast. Of course I told you. Oh, best we talked, new Because we talked about it. Awesome. We're, yeah. So we'll get a lot, a lot more listeners, hopefully. We should, yeah. I, I hope it. I, I hope the word gets around because well, of how this vote happened. What did NSA finally approve us? No. Uh, let me see. Do, let me ask you this: Who? What do you think the best new podcast is? It's got to be ours. See. Yep. See. We I, were just. We were. <laughs> we were just voted best new podcast by so you. I voted for us. You voted for us. It's yeah. a majority. So I hope word gets around because. Uh, that's what the show is going to be called. Cool. <laughs> so let's see. Because it reminds me of that billboard in Michigan. Did you ever see the dentist biz- d- billboard in Michigan? No. Yeah, there's this dental practice guy, the big dumb dentist face on the board, and it said, voted best dentist in Michigan. And then there's an asterisk, and then little tiny letters down in the corner, it says, by our staff. <laughs> <laughs> So well, our staff just voted, and I voted it the best. So yeah, me too. So it has to be the best. Sweet. So what kind of great topics do you have this week on our best new uh, podcast? Okay, I got one for you. So yeah, I'm in Cleveland. We're doing the auto show as usual. You're in, uh, you're still in Milwaukee, right? As of today. As yeah. of today. And where are you off to next? Atlanta. Okay. Um, well, did I tell you the Peter Murray Fridge Saga story? There's a Peter Murray Fridge Saga story. People, Peter Murray is one of our information technologies technicians. No, he says he's the not. He, he's the non-IT IT guy. Is that what he's claiming to be? Yeah, because he really doesn't know a lot about IT. He just knows how to read manuals really well. Hey, 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 hey. Now you're going to get him in trouble at work. People no. at work listen to this. <laughs> well, he admits it, but he's he's got a personality, so he's not like the other IT guys. Now you're getting yourself in trouble. That's Look at how this happens. <laughs> it just snowballs so quickly. It did. <laughs> the product specialists you're aren't crazy. afraid of him. <laughs> so he has, he has uh, IT uh, knowledge, but I think his main point is sort of like some of the other guys, too, that... Uh, when they have issues they can figure them out they have the ability to be able to figure those issues out so that's what makes them valuable in the field indeed yeah see how i did that i try and smooth it over for your dumb mouth (laughs) (laughs) to to not get me in trouble (laughs) right so anyway what happened with our co-worker peter murray in a in a fridge oh so this hotel we're at we're at the sheridan airport and uh oh hey, hey 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 Wait, we forgot. There's an update. Okay. What's the update? It's yours, your update. You have an update to a show for for what was on last week, a topic from last week. Okay, remind me, what is it? (laughs) Remind me, it was your update, jackass. (laughs) (laughs) Last week, one of Davin's laborers uh, had an issue, (laughs) and he wanted, he needed to borrow a car, uh, and so a stranger doesn't even know the guy. Just met him on the job this week. Loans him the car. Loaned his him girlfriend's his, his car. His girlfriend's yeah. car because he didn't have a car. Right. So David and I, I'll just give the preface. You can give the update. But David and I decided that we think it would have been a great idea if that car was stolen just to teach that guy a lesson. Because <laughs> who loans somebody else's car to a stranger anyway? Especially, that's stupid to start Especially with. to a stranger whose car got repossessed. And that was the whole premise of the thing was... The guy had to leave because his car got repossessed, and we were trying to figure out, well, how did he leave? 
Well, one of the yeah. other crew guys gave him his girlfriend's car to leave. Right. Um, so well, uh, the guy tell us what happened. Evidently, the guy didn't come back with a car. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. <laughs> so, so they filed a police report, and the next morning the guy returned the car. Yeah, but so, still, <laughs> lesson learned. The car was stolen for several hours, in other words. <laughs> I wonder what happened in that car. I, you know? I would have loved to hear heard the girlfriend's conversation with the boyfriend. You did what? <laughs> with my car? Yeah. That on top of what could have happened in that car while it was gone those 24 hours. Oh, Lord. You know, they get in the car. It smells like crack. It's, uh, <laughs> there's blood in the back seat and they're on Dateline next week. <laughs> the, the trunk smells like a dead body. <laughs> Yeah, wait a minute. I had I had a topic. Oh, I must have erased it, though. Because I said Dateline. I always get stuck in the road, and I'm watching Dateline all the time. Now I'm watching 48 Hours. But, oh, that's I remember what it was. Before you go on to your fridge story, I, I remember I was thinking, uh, it's almost like you can pick which person you know that's going to end up on Dateline. Uh-huh. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> I've got this guy that I know. I call him a friend, but I haven't talked to him in a long time, and I, and frankly, I don't, don't, you know, we're not the same type of people. This guy is on Facebook, and he somehow or another ran into a lot of money. Okay. And nobody can figure out how he ran into so much money. And now he lives down in Florida, and every single fucking post that he makes is talking about how much money he has. Okay. And it's all done in different ways. Like, hey, look, here's my hotel for the next month. And he lives, like, right in the area. But he's going to go live in a, a fancy hotel for a month because he has money. Well, and does anybody want to join me on this cruise? It only costs 5000 a week, and you get your own butler. You know, and he's always just pushing how much cash <laughs> he has. So I keep thinking that's the guy that's going to end up either dead or killing somebody because... He's just out of control. You can't just have a whole bunch of money and just act like an asshole the whole time about it without something happening to you or someone else, you know? Somebody needs to rob that guy's house when he's at his hotel or on his cruise. <laughs> you know, that's probably what will happen now that you said that. Now that I said that. I now everybody's going to look at... They're all going to look on my friend list and they're going to say, who is this guy? I need to rob this guy. <laughs> Uh, we should just go over his house and paint a giant big dick on his front door. Yeah, he needs it. The, the reason I keep him on my list, and I hope he doesn't listen, really, <laughs> is because he, he, he'll just be pissed off. I'll know when I get dropped off his friends list next week. But the reason I keep him on there is because I'm amazed at how often he tries to tell everybody how wealthy he is. Right. And it's is he single insane. or married? Of course he's single. Oh, God. <laughs> There's no way. I'll have to show you. One of these times when we're together, I'll show you his... I'll just You could just zoom through his, his page, and you'll tell. Because there isn't one post that isn't bragging about how much money he's got. Oh. It's amazing. And there's multiple posts a day. They all relate to it. Look what I'm going to have for lunch today. And it'll be like a gold bar. <laughs> you know, it's just stupid. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway. <laughs> All right, I'm done venting about that guy. So, the fridge story. And yes. Peter, the non-IT, IT guy, um, who we refer to as the beard. Yes. Because his beard is perfectly trimmed and manicured, and it arrives about 10 minutes ahead of Peter. Yes, it's his own <laughs> to, personality. It, it kind of announces his arrival. <laughs> <laughs> So we're all sharing a car. There's four of us down here, and two of them are actually leaving um, tomorrow, but then Peter mm -hmm. and I are going to end up staying for the whole run of show. Yes. But we have to share a car. So the the morning car stories, and the first day he was here, he's, okay, okay, I'm here at the hotel for 15 days, and they don't have fridges in the room. So I asked for a fridge, and they told me it was $10 a day for a fridge. Right. So I, I said, well, why didn't you pull the old, I need a fridge for my medication? And that way they give mm -hmm. it to you free. He's like, I, I just don't feel right about that. You know, it's a karma thing. Because if I do that, then maybe I'll get diabetes and it won't be cool. 
<laughs> right. So all we heard about for two days was Peter and his fucking fridge and how he wanted to put hummus in his fridge, but he doesn't have a fucking fridge because <laughs> he doesn't have status and what the hell's up with this hotel? He's here for 15 days and doesn't get a goddamn fridge. Correct. So he used Twitter and tweeted bitching about not getting a fridge <laughs> and how SPG is so cheap that... If he's here for 15 days and spending over $1,500 at this hotel and they want to charge him $10 a day, they're nickel and diamond him. So he tweeted yeah. that SPG Assist contacted him back. Right. They said, we are contacting the manager of the hotel. You should receive a phone call in two hours in regards to your fridge. We appreciate you being a loyal SPG member, you know. And please let us know if we can serve you in the future. Right. Very, very polite and corporate. He gets back to the room, no fridge in his fucking room. But his message light is blinking, and he recorded it. However, the recording was kind of crappy, because otherwise I'd play it for you. Um, yeah. But it was the manager, the same manager. He asked for the fridge, and they wouldn't give it to him for free. Uh, the manager basically left the message saying, uh, Mr. Murray, I wanted to... Uh, let you know we'll be sending that complimentary fridge up to your room, and if there's anything else you need um, assistance with, please feel free to contact me directly. In other words, right. in other words, don't contact SPG and get my ass in fucking trouble. And he had right. that, he had that tone about his voice. Uh huh. Now, how would you have handled that phone call? I would have handled that. I well, you already people already know me. I would call that guy up and I would explain to him that I already contacted him directly and it didn't seem to work. So then I decided to contact somebody else about the issue since the direct contact didn't work. Because I wouldn't want him to go around thinking that he got one over on me, mm-hmm. like that he was like he was allowed to call up and yell at me for getting him in trouble. Because that's all that was. He's just yelling at Peter for getting him in trouble. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have taken it. I would have explained to him very obnoxiously that uh, that I already tried that, and uh, maybe the next time uh, he he won't refuse it right away or whatever. So I will contact but, you directly. <laughs> yeah. What would you do? Uh, I would contact him directly with a big fist in the throat. <laughs> <laughs> he just I'd karate chop him in the Adam's apple. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing Peter did was he gave the guy uh, that brought the fridge up 20 bucks and said, be sure to let your manager know I appreciate the complimentary fridge. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> so the guy who really made out was the guy who delivered the fridge. Exactly. <laughs> but it's nice to know that SPG will respond to that. And this isn't the first time I've heard of these things. Now I'm going to start doing it with our Twitter account. Mm-hmm. I'll start complaining. Because I hear about it all the time. That they, res- In fact, what I, I read an article th- saying that a lot of times they respond faster to Twitter than if you're trying to email them or even f- call them. Mm-hmm. So Twitter might be the new way t- to get things done, at least until too many people are doing it. Uh, you ready for my stupid Sheridan Airport hotel story? Is it a good one? Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> okay. Well, we all know that that Cleveland is the land of stupid and that's where the <laughs> that's where the bell curve starts you know for intelligence you are really pushing that now uh, how many cities do we have to alienate per season because <laughs> we beat up on Texas like crazy well this is Cleveland <laughs> yeah we kicked around Miami earlier in the year Ron at Ron from Texas is probably from Cleveland originally <laughs> so <laughs> anyway yep. um Go down to the front desk, and I said, hey, do you guys have a uh, washer and dryer? And they said, there's like four people standing at the desk waiting to help somebody. And the girl says, mm-hmm. uh, uh, no, we don't. However, we can send it out. I said, well, why in your gift shop, then, do you have the ability to buy boxes of Tide and fabric softener? Yeah. She looks at me dead-faced, not even, you know, not even thinking about what she's saying, I'm assuming, or maybe she believes it, but she looked at me and said, well, people like to do their laundry in their sink. (laughs) So that's why they're offering boxes of Tide in their gift shop. Yep. 
So I'm tempted to call down there and say, hey, can you send up a washboard for me? And maybe uh, <laughs> maybe a clothes hanger, you know, a clothesline that I could string in the room to dry the stuff and, and some clothes pins because people really like washing their clothes in their sink. Can you send up a washboard for me and send it up with a hillbilly so he can play it on the way up? Because <laughs> I'm going to wash my clothes in the sink because you said people like doing their clothes laundry in their sink. Well, I don't want to be a devil's advocate or anything, but <laughs> I can tell you that what she said is true. And I know this, not because I do it, because I would never wash anything in the sink in a hotel room. But we have a, a workmate that does that. So I just heard about it uh, a week ago, uh. how somebody how somebody washes their washes their socks and washes their filters in the sink oh. their filters that's a chris harwood thing that's what he always used to call someone's underwear was your filters i gotta change my filters oh that's gross <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna say who that person is because there was already too much beating up on him <laughs> last week by let's pretend it was just you oh okay <laughs> We'll just pretend it was just you because it wasn't just you. <laughs> but it makes me feel better to lie. <laughs> I, I'm waiting for him to cut the electricity in my room and bring up candles. Why? Because, Cause why? because yeah, because people like to do that. People, bring up like to save en- people like to save energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is funny. I, I wonder how many people wash their underwear in the sink in a hotel room. Oh, I was, Talking to Bob the other day, and he goes, hey, do you need to do laundry? Who's Bob? Uh, the listeners don't know who Bob is. Bob Olivi. <laughs> Say his full name. Bob <laughs> There's a guy Olivi. I work with named Bob. Yeah. yeah. His social security number is... No, so anyway, Bob uh, Bob found a laundromat that we could drop off our clothes at and uh, get a wash and fold done. But uh, the interesting thing was Bob was out of underwear, and he said he... He's um, recycling it. So he's turning it. I said, oh, you're turning it inside out? And he goes, no, I'm turning it front side back. <laughs> like, that's, that's disgusting. Come on, you just blew up Bob's spot. Isn't that what they say? You blew him up. I have a friend named Steve. I won't tell his last name. Okay. We were at a, we were at a golf outing years ago. And it was one of those ones that starts early in the morning. You know, uh-huh. you got to go. And it, it was for a bar. But, of course, we were at that same bar and closed it the night before. So we're all hung over. We show up at the at the golf outing. And we go through the first couple of holes. And then he's got to take a piss. And like every grown man on earth, we'll walk off into the woods on the golf course to take a piss. And I just hear him, like, uh, going, what the hell? <laughs> and he's, like, yelling. And I'm like, what are you talking about? What are you doing, Steve? And he's got it. He goes, I got my underwear on backwards. He was trying to. <laughs> he couldn't fish it out because the freaking barn door was on the other side. <laughs> he's all mad at himself. I'm like, how do you put your underwear on backwards? What's wrong with you? Oh, uh, the worst. The worst is when you shart. And <laughs> well, <laughs> and you don't want to throw your underwear out. You know, because it's like, oh, wow, you know, this underwear doesn't have holes in it. I can't throw this out. What what, what am I going to do with it? Um, That's when you actually use the sink to rinse them out. I think that's the only time I've ever used the sink to rinse out or do my laundry was when I shit myself. (laughs) I haven't had to deal with that yet. I'm not saying it's not coming in my lifetime. But so far, I've been pretty pretty lucky that I have not had sharts to deal with. Oh, Keith was telling us some really... Keith, our audio guy, was telling us some really bad stories about his dad. Uh, before he passed away, he had Crohn's disease. Why are we going to do this? Maybe <laughs> Keith doesn't want us talking about his dad. Keith is going to laugh his ass off because he told these stories on the way to work to everybody. He's, yeah. He's proud of it. <laughs> you should get his permission before you tell his dad's aging stories or whatever oh nah fuck it um (laughs) oh god so evidently his dad out of the 33 feet of colon that most people have um they had had to cut out a bunch of it so he's down to six feet okay so stuff didn't process the same 
and basically when, every, every meal he ate, he would have to go to the bathroom right away, and he'd have to go like eight times a day. Yeah. So there were lots of lots of issues with, and all his friends knew about it. <laughs> so you don't want to be in the same bathroom <laughs> as his dad. Oh, God. And uh, evidently, one day his dad shit himself in the car. Could quite make it home but it was his favorite pair of underwear so he put it in a bag in the trunk and brought it home for his wife to wash uh we're just on the wrong road right now (laughs) enough we got to stop you from this this is not the kind of show we need it is the best show ever (laughs) but you know i have one that is uh related to that okay so before before we decide how bad you are (laughs) you have to hear how bad i am okay so back to the bums. Okay, I'm uh, I'm in a city where you have some. I'm in Milwaukee, okay. and any time you walk one block away from the hotel, you have the string of three or four street people trying to give get stuff from you. Okay, I I ran into a new one because we've seen them all, but this is the first time for me. So I'm walking down the street. And this, I knew it was coming. I'm trying to not make eye contact, doing all the right things, and the guy was just too much. He was just like, hey, 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 you know? Okay. And I just look at him and put my arms up like, what? And he goes, got any change, man? I just had my colon removed. And he he lifted his shirt up, and he's showing me the bag. (laughs) Oh, well... But he's got the bag sitting there, like right on his, like taped to his stomach. He's got the freaking gross shit bag or whatever the hell it is. Oh, so he and, showed you the shit bag for sympathy so you would give him money. Yeah, right. I'm thinking to myself, wow, that's a good one. That probably gets him a lot of cash. But I just looked at him and I go, no. And then he goes, can I get a smoke? <laughs> And then I thought to myself, first, I really wanted to say, if you just had your colon removed and you're in that bad of shape, maybe you shouldn't be smoking. But I didn't say that. I just laughed because I'm like, <laughs> really? He's, he's just going down the list. I just shook my head and went, oh, I, no, I, uh, first I said, all I have is this one because I've been smoking like one smoke a day. Yeah. And this was my one walking back from the Walgreens store to the, to the hotel. And I go, just this one. And he asked if he could hit it. Oh, <laughs> and then I just started laughing. I just went, "Oh no, no, no!" I just walked away from him. But <laughs> oh, at least he made me laugh with how ridiculous he was going with this thing. Oh. I just had my colon out. Can I put my lips on your smoke? Oh, <laughs> want to see my blood shit bag? Yeah. Oh, by the way, and let I... me touch. Let me touch your lips. And I've got hepatitis <laughs> C too. <laughs> yeah, I know. get away from me. <laughs> That's you should have pulled the old the uh, the taint the your taint story. My taint. Which one's my taint story? I don't remember. You should have looked at him and said, "I've got a boil on my taint," and then just kept walking. <laughs> oh yeah, the out like the outdoing them with with uh, grossities. Exactly. You call it. I just had my colon removed. Really? I just had my my taint has giant boils all over it. <laughs> Would you <laughs> like taint. to see? <laughs> yes. I have a serrated asshole. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you can think of. I got this scar when I fought Jaws. Well, maybe Stand you should, there for three hours. Maybe you should get some laundry soap and wash your taint a little more often in the sink. <laughs> yeah, dip it in the sink. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, I have a hotel one, too. So we already passed the hotel one, but I have a new one. Okay. You might even like this one. It's a new tip. Here's okay. the tip of the day. Jerry Taylor's hotel tip of the day to help you out. Many times in our profession, we have to leave the hotel room at different times. Like, for instance, this show that I'm on didn't start till 3 p.m., which is unheard of. Right. But they always want to clean your room. Right. And I, don't, I like to have the room cleaned and straightened up. It makes me feel like I'm at home because my house is so darn clean all the time. But, thanks, <laughs> thanks, thank you, Lisa. Lisa. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, so I was having a hard time because you'll go down to the front desk and say, hey, could you have them clean it uh, at uh, 1 o'clock because you go to the show floor two hours before, all that kind of stuff. Right. And and uh, they said, yes, we'll tell them. But that never happens. They don't do it. So I came up with a brilliant scheme that worked all week. Okay. I took I took the do not disturb sign. 
I took some of our favorite material, electrical tape, okay. and I took a, a little the little piece of paper from the pad of paper, mm-hmm. and I wrote a note that said, 1 o'clock p.m., please, and taped it onto the Do Not Disturb sign and hung it on the door. And then that person showed up. And then I did it again when I had to open up earlier. I did, like, uh, 11 a.m., please, and hung it on the door. And they came in right at those times. So when they walked around and looked at it, they have a reference to when you want it done. And it works better than telling the dumbass front desk that never relays any messages. That's a good plan. Well, this so hotel... you could try that. This hotel has the uh, that go green option where you can get 500 bonus points or... Well, it's a voucher. So you get either 500 yeah. bonus points or $5 for their restaurant or gift shop so you can buy Tide. Um, <laughs> yeah, for your under for your sharded underwear. For, yeah. ev- for every time you don't get your room cleaned. Yes. So you register for that, and then you're supposed to tell the front desk um, when you actually do want your room cleaned. I figured out a way around it, because at about... Two o'clock in the morning, they slide the voucher under your door with the date on it and everything else. Yeah. So now it's like, oh, fuck, they can't clean my room today because they already slid this voucher in. The secret is you catch the maid in the hallway. Right. And you say, hey, can you possibly clean uh, room 910 for me? And here's five bucks. And hand her the tip right there. Yeah. And the front desk knows nothing about it, so you still get the 500 bonus points and you get your room cleaned. Oh, so you're catching them the day of. Correct. That's interesting. But they don't report that back to the front desk, then, you're saying? I already have the voucher under the desk, so 15 uh, days, oh, okay. I, don't, yeah. I don't think they'll realize it. Oh, I thought that they would do that for the day before, not for the day of. No, nope, okay. they, they put the slip in for the you know the next morning. Yeah. So. I got to call Marriott now, now that you say that. Why is that? Because my my stay has not, my Philadelphia stay has not popped up yet. So I had 21 days there in Philadelphia. And um, and they're only showing like the four days that I, that I paid for a room for my kids to come out and visit. Okay. And they're not showing any of my 21 days, along with the 8,000 bonus points I'm supposed to get for their green option. Right. Oh, definitely call them, because I, I had to call the, the hotel where I was paying for the rooms for the guys in uh, at the Consumer Electronics Show, because um, yeah. I wasn't getting credit for those. It's like, I booked it, I paid for it, my name was on the reservation as well as theirs, how come I'm not getting credited for it? Yeah. And what happened was the guys put down their credit cards for incidentals, and somehow that threw the whole system off. Hmm. So. Yeah, but you should still, no, you paid for the rooms. Exactly. So I had had to fight them for it, and they had to call accounting with me on the line to verify the credit card that was used to pay for the rooms. (laughs) Right. They just want to fight with you until you give up and... That wasn't going to happen for you. No, not at all. So not when it comes to points. Oh, and I called uh, SPG um, today because remember back in December, um, I found out that they they were going to offer an option to cash in your 10 complimentary free room upgrades for um, $100 gift cards for Amazon. How many $100 gift cards? Well, I originally thought it was going to be 10 so I thought yeah. they were going to give you a thousand dollars if you chose that option. No, nope. yeah. it'd be one, right? One hundred dollar gift card, and here's the catch. Oh, well, no, you need to change that in your profile, but you can. You have to change it between January first and January fifteenth to take advantage of that. <clears throat> okay. Well, that would have been nice to fucking know. Yeah, yeah, why don't you tell us? So they have a lot of hidden stuff you don't know about. Like, uh, where am I right now? I'm at a, what the hell kind of hotel? Oh, this is a Hyatt. So I'm diamond here at Hyatt because I gamed the system to get this way. And then I read through the benefits. And I'm supposed to have these certificates too. Mm -hmm. These upgrade to a suite certificates. And I think there's only like three of them that you get from Hyatt. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I noticed that you get 
two passes to the United Airlines Club. Yep, I got those as well. And I didn't get any of this stuff, actually. It's been months, but I still haven't received any of this stuff. Oh, they, you got actual, like, paper vouchers. passes? Yeah, they because they sent me my new diamond card in the mail. Yeah. And it had uh, it had the two free passes in there. Mine didn't. I got the card. I didn't get anything. Did I you, got the booklet and the card. Did you look? It. Did you look through the booklet though? Yeah, I did. Okay, because they were taped to one of the pages inside the booklet, or glue, yeah, I don't you know that little so. glue shit that's half-ass glue that you know yeah. you have to rub off <clears> that <throat> feels like boogers when you're done. Right, I flipped through that whole thing looking because that's how they do some of the other stuff, like those SPG "You Made My Stay" things and all that. Right. So I did look through that whole thing because I wanted to see. There was no upgrade certificates or United Airlines stuff. Yeah, I got mine. Call and, them. And they expire in uh, 2017. So yeah, you've got a year and a half. Have. Yeah, which is great. So I'm, I'm hoping that you could use those to get into the club even if you're not flying United. Do you think that's a problem? Uh, that's the way it looks. You want me to pull mine out and read it? If you can, the people might enjoy that kind of information. Okay. It's called a Hyatt United Club one-time pass. Yeah. Uh, it's valid through 630 of 2017. Here it comes. Terms and conditions. There we go. Uh, this pass grants one person one-time access to the United Club location subject to United Club terms and conditions. United.com, United Club rules, and access policies. So they may not let you in unless you're flying United. That's uh, my guess. Yep. Access is subject to availability. Um, effective August 18th, 2016. Same day boarding pass is required for entry. Yeah. This pass may not be sold bartered traded exchanged or purchased so you have gotcha. to you have to fly freaking united as of august 18th so we got to use it doesn't, between august it still doesn't say that though it still doesn't say it It says same day boarding pass it doesn't say f- same day united boarding pass oh that's true i would try it though if you find yourself in, because you're not, you didn't do the Delta Club anymore. No, I so. didn't. I didn't renew that. That was too expensive, and I wasn't using it enough. Because I'm, I'm stuck in hotels more than I'm stuck in airports. Yeah, I had. Uh, I was. I think mine paid off already. Um, at least it did for last year, because I got stuck a few times. And one time I was stuck for eleven hours. Oh yeah, that so. would definitely pay for itself. Yeah, I sat in that. I sat in there eating, and I wasn't drinking booze. I would have been hammered if I did, though. But I forgot because my uh, flight kept getting postponed. And it was funny because we finally got the f- the flight going, and it was right. It was boarding the same time the club was closing. Oh, so, nice! So I didn't even have to go outside and wait at all. It was just the luxury of tiny little pieces of crackers with cheese. Ooh. <laughs> you know. You know what the, what qualifies as food in those clubs. <laughs> yeah. And uh and let's see, what else do they have? They've got that sun dried tomato um hummus. Yep. Some olives. Yep. Uh what else do they have? The peanuts, they will, the they'll trail have, mix. Uh vegetables with ranch. In the morning uh, they'll they have always yogurt. have yeah, it's it's good for some people because they have soups. Mm-hmm. I never do the soups, but they always have like two different kinds of soups. And they'll have salads and all kinds of stuff. All the shit I don't eat. Uh. I want them to put out there a brisket. Then I'd be I'd be <laughs> happy. <laughs> all the all the shit the product specialists would pack in their bags and haul off and call lunch. I've I've done that a few times. What I would take is I would get a bunch of their crackers and then for a long time they had some of them still do it. I haven't seen them for a while though. They had this specialty Parmesan cheese spread. Mm-hmm. Then it would be like peppercorn Parmesan, and then it would be plain. And it was from the Super Cheese Company. So I'd take a bunch of those things and throw them in there and eat them on the plane when I was flying regular coach. You're not supposed to take things, remove food I items. Know. 
they you're can, not supposed to put a, pl- a Ziploc bag into your backpack and just continue to dump <laughs> your plates into it while you're sitting there in that club. <laughs> some people do it, though. <laughs> yep, some people do it. And some people steal their tea, too. I steal tea bags oh. from them. Earl Grey, they have really good Earl Grey tea there from some company. I can't. I don't have one with me. I can't remember the name, but it starts with an H, like... Harney, oh, it's Harney and Sons or something like that. And it's really good. So I always take a handful of the tea bags with me. <laughs> I hate saying tea bag anymore. What year did that become a bad word? <laughs> oh, the Joey Buttafuoco era. No, I don't know. who. <laughs> Joey Buttafuoco. I have another observation. We're sort of on the topic. Okay. My observation is about airport chairs. Okay. They're the same in every airport. They are. It's like, They're the same black leather-looking chairs in every single airport. I don't get it. It must have been the same supplier for every airport. Every airport in the country, <laughs> you know. They that are, guy made a lot. That, that guy made his fortune then on black, uncomfortable airport chairs. Whatever happened to the chairs of the TV and the and the armrest? Uh, <laughs> Remember those? Yep. <laughs> Actually, I always thought that would be there's a airline graveyard um in arizona somewhere and i always thought if you can build a home theater that would be awesome do it as a get the first class plane flight leather chairs with the tv that pops out of the arm and the the tray table and make a home theater using those kind of seats because that'd be cool you're talking about the plane seat, though. I was just talking right. about the ones that were in the oh, in, in the, the uh, airport. That's true. Did you see the uh, Did you see the little monitors where you can order food at Detroit Airport now? They have it at um, in New York as well, where you can sit down and touch screen order, and they'll deliver it to your seat, to your lobby seat or whatever. It yeah, is. while you're waiting at the gate, you sit in the seat and you make your order at like up to four different restaurants that are in in that side of the airport and they'll deliver right to you hmm that's a good idea i hope it works i've got another air i've got an airline thing for you i have another one too but go ahead with yours first have you noticed that spirit airlines has changed the color of their planes i have not noticed that well we're at the cleveland airport so i was out having a cigarette and i see this new spirit airline color which is yellow but it's not like okay. it's <laughs> first of all it's not like the normal yellow color it's like if you ate a bag of vitamins and then pissed it's that vitamin piss yellow color like gatorade yellow yeah and i'm thinking okay let's An- anti antifreeze <laughs> yellow <laughs> so so when it's in the sky other planes can't see it because if you're looking if the sun's out you can't see this fucking plane which is stupid it's like, yeah. let, let's paint our plane blue and then crash it in the ocean. No one will find it. I, <laughs> I think they should have went with the black box orange color. Cause, the black box orange? Well, yeah, because the black box is on the plane. Even though they're called the black box, they are bright orange, so you can find them. I didn't know that. You didn't know that? Yeah, the black no, boxes. No, we learn something new every day. They aren't black boxes. And actually, that kind of I was laughing because GMC years ago had a color, and you know how they name colors weird. GM, yes. GMC had a color, and I actually called the office on it because I thought it was somebody messing with the computer. It was "Pull Me Over Red" was the name of the color. Pull me over red, and it was nice. a real GMC color. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Somebody had a sense of humor. That reminded me of a post I saw today from Jade, what's her name? Jade Marie Fernandez. Yeah. She posted a uh, part of, like, Google Maps that shows a road, Mm -hmm. and the name of the road is Why Me Lord Lane. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, nice. (laughs) I like that one. That one's good. That's a perfect Um, name. My airline one was about a, a new app what the hell is it called one flight or something like that okay dang it now i gotta now i gotta pull that up just because we don't want to seem too stupid so i have to go to the points guy 
which is uh do you do the points guy uh yes i do i'm subscribed to him so i, I see some of it i don't i don't get his posts all the time but i'll see him on facebook occasionally let me see what it's called he's got so many posts though but there's a new uh app out that why isn't it on here I'm gonna be mad at the points guy. Yeah, see, he kind of. Oh, tur- one, uh, one go. Have you heard this? No. And I know what you're gonna say about him too. He turned all corporate because now all he's doing is pushing credit cards. Yep, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> yep. But he does give some really good information on, uh, especially during the times where they're having promotions that we don't know about. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the points guy is awesome, and still in in a way, but he is a sellout. <laughs> Which we hope to be someday is sellouts, too, that we could advertise credit cards on our show. Sponsorships. <laughs> yeah. So there's an app called One Go, uh, One Go Unlimited Flying App. Okay. And uh, you pay, how much is it? $2,795. Um, and I think that's for a month. But. You can fly as many times as you want on any airline. Holy shit. So he did. He was doing a, a month trial. He didn't have much success with it, but it really wasn't anything to do with the, the app itself. It was to do with the programming. They had glitches in the program, and, and it was screwing with American Airlines bookings and all this kind of crap. So they just said, all right, we're going to refund you all the money back right now because it's not working for you and then when we get it fixed we're going to give you another month plus one week free so anyway i thought that was an interesting thing you pay two thousand seven hundred ninety five dollars for a month and you can fly any amount of times you want you could just constantly fly if you want and all you, and it has all the flights open and you can use your uh points too like not use your points you could acquire points with your reward stuff because they're booking it but it's still you and your loyalty program it's not like Priceline or any of those things you know wow and it's any airline any airline United American Airlines Delta I guess any participating airline but it seems like they all participate so if you were like one of these super frequent flying people in business it would probably be good for you to get it or if you decided for this month I'm gonna take a vacation and I'm gonna go everywhere this sounds like something that's going to be on your topclassactions.com <laughs> site because they're going to get hit with, uh, oh, it's an automatic renewal, so we charge you that amount every month until you cancel, and good luck finding on the app where you can actually cancel. Uh, I don't know. That's a possibility, but I think that it's got too much visibility right now because mm-hmm. they were profiled by all of the travel sites and all of the Forbes and all that kind of stuff that do these things so one go but that would be cool i mean i guess if you have that kind of cash you could just pay three thousand bucks and i'm hoping that it's international because then you can just go take you know i'm going to fly over to england then fly over to ireland then fly back over to africa or whatever you want to do you know well that would totally make sense if you had a couple business trips planned and you had to fly overseas you know yeah but I'm going to make a guess that it's only for within the continental United States. Oh, yeah. there's There's got to be a catch somewhere. Yeah. So, but still, I mean, if you planned it right and you decided you're going to take a month off, you can go visit everybody you know in every state you know for a couple of days. Is there an airport and, in Wyoming? I don't know. What is in <laughs> Wyoming? A running joke that there is nothing in Wyoming. I don't even think there. There, I think it's just a hole. Like, and there's nothing in it. They've been fooling us for years. Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Yeah. See, it's a hole. <laughs> it's a vortex that takes you to another place, a nicer place. Wyoming, the place where everything goes to die. Okay, so you were talking about getting sponsorships and stuff. I watched. Yeah. Um, it kind of has something to do with it, with product placement. Um, I got off work uh, the other night, and I was still wired up, so I decided to watch the original Back to the Future. Okay. There we go. And I noticed all of the freaking product placement 
in that goddamn movie, which yeah. ha- had to pay a big chunk of that movie. And I was going to start writing down which ones they were, but it was like Pepsi. Yep. It was, um, they had a, a clock in the beginning that was a regulator clock, uh, Miller Lite. There's a Miller Lite truck parked in the background. DeLorean. Then the next, <laughs> yep, one of the next scenes you see, he's, uh, they're at the dinner table and the kid's drinking a Miller Lite. And then, then there's a Bud Light and then they're pouring some some crackers or breakfast cereal and that label is upside down kind of almost like your ad here <laughs> yeah um but they were feeding the dog cal can does cal That's can a while ago does cal can still exist i have no idea do you think the internet would know i don't know but what i was just looking at, at all of the freaking product placement in those movies and Movies nowadays, if you wanted to make one, you could probably convince a lot of advertisers to give you money for product placement and make the whole movie product placement shit. And they do. That's what happens with every single movie you see. A lot of it is paid for by product placement. Offset the cost, not paid for. Calcan does exist. It's now in dry dog food as well. Okay. It's a green one. That's probably why I didn't see it. They changed their logo and they changed their colors because it used to just be like tan and black. But yes, Calcan still exists. So years ago, I was trying to do a TV show with some guys called Restoration Jumpstart. Okay. And our, our entire idea, and this was back in 2002 or something like that, our whole entire idea was to do the whole thing from product placement. And uh, the only people we could get was Red Bull and <laughs> They didn't even, they didn't want to spend the money. They just wanted to offer us as much Red Bull as we could drink. So, <laughs> so you could fill the set with Red Bull. Yeah, they, were, they would say, if you, uh, if you want to put Red Bull in, if you want to integrate Red Bull in there and show people drinking it, you can have as much as you want. Nice. And we'll, we'll send you cases and cases of it. Their problem was that it wasn't a bad idea. It was the fact that we weren't a proven show. Right. So we were trying to get... We were trying to finance a first season with product placement, but that didn't work. And then dealing with automotive companies is hard, too, because it had to be like, you know, brake places and Penn's oil and all that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. They, they don't need it, kind of. That's true. But also there was, uh, I like radio dramas. I always have. Like for when I was a kid, I'd listen to Mystery Theater with E.G. Marshall on at night, and they'd do like the scary sh- shit on on the radio but Stephen King had a book called The Mist okay they, they turned they turned it into a movie years ago but before they had it as a movie back in 89 ish 88 maybe they did a radio play of it and it was the most product placement that I've ever experienced because the whole story takes place inside of a grocery store Mm-hmm. So it was so it's stupid. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah, they were, I mean, in the dialogue, because you can't see it because it's a radio play. So this was what made it even more ridiculous. It would say, oh, hey, I see you're resting here in the cereal aisle over here by the Kellogg's. You know, mm-hmm. they would, like, they'd work it into what they were saying. By the Raisin Bran, yeah. You couldn't, you couldn't go fifth, you know, five sentences in dialogue without somebody mentioning some sort of product. Oh God! And it was, and mentioning it by its real name, you know, they would say stuff like, uh, "I don't know what kind of supplies we have here in this grocery store. I know we have some Coca Cola. We also have some uh, Mrs. Butterworth's." Uh, you know, and they would just go through stuff, saying it. It was just so dumb. Did I ever? Um, did I ever tell you? You think about- we need to hold on a second? I think somebody died in the back room. Let's get some Johnsons and Johnsons floor wax to clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> it was that dumb. Perhaps a little Windex. By the, by the uh, what company is that? By Procter and Gamble, yeah. you know, or something like For, that. <laughs> some Febreze to freshen up the area. Exactly. Uh, did I ever? Um, did I ever talk about the uh, rollover competition? On ESPN2. Rollover. No. 
was clicking around. This was a few years back, and they had this was when ESPN two first came out. And they really didn't have enough sports to you know to actually have a real network. So they were coming up with all kinds of weird sports to show on TV. Mm-hmm. I remember they had a rollover competition one night, and it was these guys take these old jalopies and they drive them around a circle track. And then they hit this half ramp and try to roll their car. Yeah. And they'd get points. Judges would say, oh, great roll, you know. If the car still ran, they would go around again and do it again. And they'd take the best points out of all the rolls that they can get before the car wouldn't run anymore. Yeah. Pro- the advertising on that. They would put on the bottom of the cars, and it was all like collision shops and oil shops. <laughs> so when they're showing the replays in slow, super slow motion of the cars rolling over, it's like Al's collision, and it has the address and phone number. And, and I thought that was genius, brilliant. Yeah, it is. You know what else is brilliant? Our new podcast. I mean, it's not new. We're actually what sixty-two episodes old now. I know we got to do something for the hundredth episode to really celebrate. But we are. Let's not, get, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We were only just today voted best new podcast. It is the best new podcast. So I hope all of you people out there will share the best new podcast. And, uh, and hopefully you guys enjoy listening. Oh, I, damn, I forgot to tell you. She's going to be mad at me. What? Because uh, Kelly Rose, I asked her if she wanted to say anything or had any ideas for topics. And one of them was that you swear too much, and I can't, I can't understand why she doesn't think I do. I, I don't fucking, I don't fucking know, Jerry. <laughs> I don't fucking know either. <laughs> but she's going, yeah, all the swearing, and I go, what do you want to say to Deb? You mean besides all the swearing or something like that? Yeah, come to quit fucking swearing. And then she went on to talk about ripping off the bandage in a relationship, oh. and uh, and then I tried to. Uh, uh, give advice for a second and uh and then that became depressing and then you so tuned I, out and watched her mouth move so it went away <laughs> do they talk like the, the my chevy view the local my chevy view girl i don't know what her name is she's standing there too listening and she was going well sometimes when you're in a volatile relationship the best thing is just to walk away and i looked at her at uh kelly and i said Pointing to the other girl, I said, her and I are in a volatile relationship, and I'm about ready to walk away right now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you did. <laughs> and that's exactly what I did. <laughs> nice. I'd like to be helpful, but sometimes it just is depressing. And well, who am I to give advice, relationship advice anyway? What do I know? I'm just an old guy. Especially to, like, 20-something-year-olds. You know, I have no idea what they have to go through nowadays. No, I mean, I tried to give all the rational thoughts that I had, which were, you know, first of all, who walked away from whom, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, if you're the one that walked away, then why are you have a, a problem letting go? Because you already did. You walked away. If the other person walked away, why do you give a shit? Because if they don't like you, why do you care? That's this, the way to This sounds like something she needs to discuss laying down on the couch in someone's office. <laughs> Not Maybe. on the auto show floor. <laughs> Right. Well, I, well, she did say to bring that up, but uh, rip now, that, now every now everybody knows. <laughs> rip that bandage off, you know. Yeah, that's the whole deal. Is that if you're in some sort of shitty relationship that you want to be over, it can be over really quickly by just going, "Hey, I want this to be over." But mm-hmm. if you keep going back and forth and calling each other and doing all kinds of shit like that, then obviously you don't really want it to be over. Right. I think it's more fun to talk about than anything, probably, for people. I don't know about fun. <laughs> probably not fun, but, like, when you get older, it's, it seems to be a lot easier to end a relationship just because you already know that, you know, you've seen all your friends go through all the same stuff she's talking about. Yep. And you're just like, all right, well, if I'm going to end a relationship, then it's just going to be over. Because yeah. that's what adult that's what adult people do. If it's not if moving I'm, forward yeah. towards the common goal and you don't have the common goal, there's certain things you can, in a partner, there's certain things you can let slide, and then there's certain things that are deal breakers. And if there are too many damn deal breakers, 
Get the fuck out. There's no reason to waste your time. You know what you do is you make a list, and then on one side of the list you put down the good things about that person, and on the other side you put on the things that you don't like about that person. And then you rip the list up and you fucking <laughs> try to find a single guy in the town you're in. And you stuff the list inside of the underwear that you sharded in and you wash it in the hotel sink. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, everybody, thanks for listening this week. Uh, we had fun. I hope you did, too. Yep, listen again. You got to say Papa Wheelie. Oh, Papa Wheelie. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>